great. So uh, the malware actually as uh, per the uh, as a technology actually, it is a sort of a computer program that we have to uh, identify to be a malware due to uh, its bad behavior. I asked you a question at the beginning of this class today. Why do security specialists need to classify malware in two categories? We saw last class that they are actually classified um, uh, according to three groups, the trojans, viruses, and worms. And uh, we started already the definition of uh, the first category, which is the virus, the very famous one, the viruses. Uh, we said that it is a sub, it is a sort of a computer program that has a payload to execute, and it is to act secretly without asking for a consent. Thus, it is classified to be a virus. And this is a subcategory from the malware uh, group. It is a computer program, software. Good. The main purpose behind of executing a payload that uh, the, the virus do have is to do different tasks, amongst of them to encrypt your data, searching for ransom, to completely delete your uh, resources, to, uh, let's say, uh, use your account for communication with your name, means hijacking or... Uh, 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 yes, uh, yes, just using your identity, something like that. And all the uh, malicious behaviors uh, that can be done, actually, a payload can hold, yeah. Great. Uh, types of um, of uh, viruses, actually, the infector of viruses, which are the ones generated as an EXE file or COM file, uh, those are two very common executable files uh, within the uh, Microsoft environment, Microsoft Windows uh, operating systems. Uh, the resident uh, virus is uh, one that acts immediately and in lifetime on the RAM. Resident virus is uh, a virus that behaves within the RAM. We know that the RAM, the red, random access memory, it's a memory, it's a volatile memory where data has to be deleted while the computer shut down is shut down. The resident virus now is persistent one and uh, it acts on uh, the RAM, within the RAM, in the RAM, the resident virus. It is a sort of a virus, but its location and its field of action is the uh, computer RAM, the volatile memory. Boot virus, it's one uh, also category of a malware. It's a virus that infects one sector, one sector. It's a, a location, one sector inside the hard disk. It infects one location in the hard disk. This sector, this sector is having a file or a group of files responsible for booting the computer. It means to start the computer, you press the power button. Once you do that, there is one file available in the boot sector, would be loaded to the RAM. Then after the computer starts loading, starts open, starts. So. This boot virus, it infects this sector, the boot sector. Because it's infecting this sector, it is given this name, the boot virus, due to its behavior. Companion viruses, they are actually virus, they are computer uh, malware, they are pretending to be uh, similar to your resources, but they got, got executed due to a mistake, a user mistake. They are available in your environment but do not behave until you you fall into a mistake you click them you open them you share them you do something with them they would act at that time so the companion viruses they are sort of malware they are viruses also classified to be viruses and they are nominated to be companion viruses. why because they are available without doing anything they are with you in your environment without doing anything until you fall into a mistake, you as a user, they would act. Example of the batch files. The batch files, they are um, system files, they are shell-based files. They have commands in shell written, and they are actually available uh, within the operating system. Once you, you need them, you can execute them. But you may fall into a mistake by clicking a virus that have an extension as a bat, while it is not. Uh, one of your, uh, uh, let's say, required files. You are searching for a bat file. You're uh, one of the resources that you need inside your computer. But this file, it has an extension like 
a virus dot bat so you, you fall into a mistake instead of clicking your file you click the virus at that time the virus would be executed companion virus this is an example only but the category is the companion virus macro viruses they are other models of viruses that they are actually also related to microsoft and those are not related to the uh, microsoft operating system only but also they are related to specific application software microsoft base which is the microsoft office the word the excel the powerpoint the infopad the publisher all the microsoft office pack tools they are question of passing and receiving and executing and spreading macro viruses the macro viruses they are generated by the uh, vba visual basic for application scripting language which is enhanced by the uh, by the uh, microsoft office pack tools because they use the technique of the macros to act thus they are given the name macro virus they are using the technology macro from the microsoft office to act thus they are having this name macro virus uh, a complicated and more more sophisticated attack uh, can be done by more complex viruses and more, uh, let's say, severe viruses, which are the metamorphic viruses and the polymorphic viruses. The metamorphic viruses, they are sort of viruses that they actually cleverly can avoid being detected by just pretending that they are actually a very positive software while they are viruses. So they evade themselves to avoid detection they do evasion techniques to avoid being detected those are the metamorphic viruses a more complicated type of virus than the metamorphic the polymorphic viruses they also do evade themselves but also they encrypt their content they avoid being detected in addition to they encrypt their content once you open them you'll not be able to read the content it is encrypted the polymorphic virus the metamorphic virus they pretend to be positive yes they evade they hide themselves but you can open and read their content their contents polymorphic no they do even encrypt their content they are most they are more uh, uh, let's say uh, disastrous than the metamorphic viruses Second category of malware, the worms. As the word um, uh, nominate literally, or dictate, or prescribe literally, we are talking about we are talking about duda or worm, literally said. The worms or the worm uh, described in this uh, category, they are sort of programs that they actually have uh, the capabilities or the potential to be described or uh, similar to the behavior of a normal worm natural war they propagate by themselves they infect an environment they act by themselves they can give remote control to their owner and so on great um, still they are computer programs only and they are mainly designed to have actually a control on a compromised devices or a compromised device where they are res residual where they are available uh, they actually take uh, vulnerability um, they take control and they take actually the chance to explore for uh, searching for vulnerabilities and once they find and detect the vulnerability they take it to access and to get spread remote control they allow that to the owner remember great still in the same context a worm travels by itself within the environment what does it mean it means the worm most available in your computer and if your computer is connected to a network the worm will travel to the network will infect the other devices in the network without 
you click or without you open or without doing anything it will spread by itself the worm have the worm has a capability to infect the environment not the computer only once it is available in the computer it will get spread into the full environment run rather than the uh, specific uh, let's say computer or let's say device in question so if you are using a computer with a worm and you connect that computer to the network at home for example all the devices in your home will receive a copy of this worm without without you open or you click or you just share this uh, worm you yourself as a user no the worm will by itself by itself will do that actually the virus would attach itself to a file to be spread the virus in order to be spread in a network it has to attach itself into a file or to an email or something like that the worm no it will spread and affect the network without attachment immediately it will by itself get spread in the network without the need of an attachment it acts by itself means that it does not require any action from the user it means you'll see the worm spread in your network and going from a computer to another without opening anything without clicking without sharing by itself you'll find that those copies they are actually uh, being spread over the full network worms so a table summarizing uh, differences or let's say uh, an enlistment of differences between the worms and the uh, viruses can travel uh, uh, by itself yes the uh, worm yes the, uh, the virus no can attach itself to a file of vi uh, virus yes worm no uh, attach itself attach itself to the network worm yes virus no to the network here we are talking require user action worm no virus yes infects the environment worm yes virus no so we have to recognize those points Any questions at this level, please? No, no, Mr. Great, great. We continue. We continue. We we uh, we keep going on describing the categories of the uh, of the uh, malware. We uh, reach the category of the Trojans and the third category, which is uh, classified to be a master malware in uh, doing the evasion techniques because it would pretend, pretend that it is a positive solution, a positive software, while it is hiding a bad process or let's say a negative process in its background. It pretends that it is a positive picture or an image while it is not. It pretends that it is a safe software that you can download for execution or whatever you want to do while it is holding inside an injected payload that once you execute the payload would be actually executed later on Trojan remember the uh, try the story of the try is hunter weather so based on that uh, behavior the Trojan has got its uh, description here it pretends that it is something positive while it is not uh, the the behavior of this uh, actually uh, Trojan um, exactly as I said it has to actually hide itself behind uh, a positive uh, uh, description I am a good picture please download me I am the software you search for I am the operating system you need to download download me it is like that so once you click or once you download the content of the Trojan has been past your device so it tricked you at the end of the day, it tricked you. 
to install the software or to download the image or to re to download the resource in general. It tricked you as a user. Uh, it is actually a category here, the rootkits, but it is uh, classified to be a virus, maybe a worm, maybe if it has the capability to spread in between the uh, devices within the network, but mainly it is a malware that has its specific, cate uh, let's say, categorization, its specific specificity, specificity, it behaves differently, and it tackles different platform than when we compare it to a virus or a worm or a trojan, the three of them. The rootkits, it's a sort of a computer program. It is to attack the kernel. It is to attack the layer in between the operating system and the hardware. Actually, it is to have actually a, a full privilege on the device, means it will control the hardware completely and it will control the software completely. Actually, it is to obtain a special privilege to do its tasks and it will actually receive this privilege. Uh, it is actually why behaving like that, for the purpose of hiding its presence and to uh, be actually more persistent. Uh, it is to be available in the, uh, in the, in the kernel level, why to replace the operating system uh, roles. It will control, it will control the uh, operating system uh, commands. You have to know what is the kernel level in order to understand what does it mean to replace the operating system commands. It affects the kernel. The kernel is the soft layer that comes between the operating system and the hardware. There is a background software which is nominated the kernel that behaves between the operating system and the hardware, the drivers, for example. Those drivers, or specifically this kernel, is a question of being infected by a rootkit. Once it is infected, the user and the solutions, the soft security solutions, antivirus or firewall, they will not detect this rootkit. Why? Because it is in the layer down the security layer you installed. It is very far from being detected. It will not be detected. It is not difficult, but it is almost impossible. And since it is, it is almost impossible, any, uh, any infected computer with a rootkit, it has to be drawn to trash. It has to be drawn. There is no remedial for that. Almost there is no remedial for that, <clears throat> for the infection with the rootkit. Examples of uh, rootkits. I'm going to give you a task later on about this rootkit revealer, which is from Microsoft. It's a rootkit that uh, has to explore your device and say that you have a rootkit in your device or not, if you have a rootkit in your device or not. means if your device is infected with a rootkit or not, this rootkit revealer, rootkit revealer, it can do that within a Microsoft environment only, and it can be downloaded from Microsoft only. Like we did for the PS exec in the lab for the, it is from the Microsoft only. From the same location, actually, the rootkit revealer is available also from Microsoft. Another category of a malware, which is a logic bomb. Here we are going to, here we are going to explore a description of the logic bomb. Immediately, it's a sort of a back door that has the capability to act upon time by itself. Also, it is a back door that has the potential to act by itself. How to act by itself? It was for the time only. Once the time comes, the program will be executed. And since it is installed on top of a processor, so the time will be triggered, actually. The time will play the role of 
a trigger. A trigger here actually it's the event cause or the let's say the behavior cause not the event cause the behavior cause once you click a button the click of a button is a trigger once you click a link the click of a link it's uh, uh, it's a handler it's sorry it's uh, a trigger and all what you do as a user to request something from the system or from any from a given system what you do they are triggers for what you ask as a function the time can be controlled by a, a backdoor to act for example when the time is midnight the backdoor will be executed means this logic bomb will act will behave so it is given the name logic bomb why because it follows the uh, synchronization with it is synchronized with the uh, computer clock with the computer watch so it follows the time logic and it is a bomb why because it is going to uh, damage something or it, it is going to steal something or it will act in a hidden way or something like that so it, it would have actually the characteristics of a malware Okay, remember the uh, payload once it is executed. There are so many things to be done, and most of them the uh, concealed deletion, the uh, encryption, things like that. And they are all uh, to be done by all means a uh, worm or a trojan or a virus or the rootkit or the logic bomb. All of them they are questioned to execute the payload. They can actually. The same way as the same way as the rootkit, the logic bomb once it is actually in, in, inside your environment, it is not easy to detect it because it is a simple uh, text file, so like to act based on time only. Any questions, please? No, no, okay, great. From the uh, tasks that the, uh, let's say, virus do, we said that it is actually to send emails from your account. It will gain a session. It will hijack you. It will pretend that it is you, and it will send emails from your account without telling you, using your ID. So this is nominated privilege escalation the privilege escalation is the behavior of escalating privileges you are, I am an instructor but you are a student me I can use the edu wave to see all of your profiles all your marks all your grades all your subjects all of it for all of you but you you can see only your own rights so for you to gain the access to the uh, others profiles you may escalate my my privileges you may pretend that i am that you are murad once you do that you did escalate my privileges to yourself so at the end of the day it is the context of gaining rights to become an administrator you have to have the rights so to thieve those rights this is one of the concerns this is the privilege escalation Okay, I'll explain this one other stuff here. The uh, uh, the uh, emails that the, uh, for example, a malware will send from your account after doing a privilege escalation, it might be classified as a spam. The email filters, the email filters, will classify that as a spam. Why? Because the content is suspicious. So the content is suspicious, whether they actually the content is not correlated 
or something, a reason via which an email box would suspect your email to be a spam, which is undesirable email or unsolicited email, the spam. Uh, okay, I'm going to stop at this level. If you hear your name, please say yes.